The regular season is heating up. New stars are emerging, and that means more opportunities to win up to 25 times your cash on prize picks. The most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection on a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's that easy. Let it fly to turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Watch your favorite players and get paid doing it this basketball season. See your entries make progress during the game or make new entries for the second half in the fourth quarter. Three-pointers, assists, rebounds, and everything in between are yours for the taking. Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I'm not saying I'm brilliant. I'm just saying you're lucky you're with a competent radio show host because given my morning, show prep started like five minutes ago, <laughs> but it's a Monday. It's okay. The phone number is 877-973-7425, should you wish to be on this here program. We got baby formula, friends. We got baby formula. It has been shipped in to the United States from Europe. 78,000 pounds of infant formula has finally come in. It landed in Indianapolis. There was a big hullabaloo. It was a photo op. It made the front page of all the major newspapers in America. A two-pound can of formula makes 90 ounces of formula. The average daily use of baby formula for newborns through six months is five ounces every four hour or 30 fluid ounces per day. So to feed 10,000 babies for a single day takes 3 million fluid ounces or 33,333 pounds of powdered formula. Put another way... Considering 2.75 million babies are born in America every year, the supply of 78,000 pounds of formula won't last two hours. It's a photo op. That's what it is. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like Biden's doing something. You know what? what, what's so curious and interesting here is you're not allowed to buy this formula. You can't buy it. It's European formula. The Federal Food and Drug Administration will not allow the importation of formula designed for European palates. Do you know that the American Association of Pediatrics is is recommending cow milk? Uh, If you're desperate, you can give the baby cow milk. You you shouldn't, by the way. And and they've said for years you shouldn't. It's kind of like uh, the pediatric associations for years have said that uh, giving children hormones and the like is bad. And now suddenly, having been captured by the transgender lobby, they're like, yeah, go on and and like like, uh, cut off body parts when they're a kid. It's okay. Um, We have problems when the organizations that are in charge of this sort of stuff have co-opted, been co-opted by political agendas. The FDA will not allow you to buy European formula. The European formula, by all accounts, is actually formulated to a higher standard than American formula. The reason you can't regularly buy it is because of the lack of preservatives and artificial enhancements which the Europeans don't allow. Therefore, it doesn't ship as well. So in, it is allegedly to your benefit, but the American military just shipped in a bunch of baby formula from Europe on planes. European formula. That'll last a day. There, Whatever happened to the Berlin airlift? Um, why don't we have a Berlin air, airlift of, of food coming into the United States then? Why are we having to ship in formula from Europe, for God's sakes? This is embarrassing. And yet here we are. Now, let me just explain to you what's going on here. People smarter than me first pointed this out. They're just changing the language. That's it. They're changing the language. They're not changing any policies. They're making you feel good. They're making you feel like they're doing something. But they're not actually doing anything. This is all for show. It is designed to impact the polls. They haven't changed a single regulation. 
The FDA has not sped up approvals for the Abbott Labs plant. The FDA has not waived importation rules for, uh, for, for drugs. The FDA has not done anything that could, in fact, benefit the supply of baby formula. They haven't done anything. The Biden administration, in the same way, is just talking about the um, talking about the economy in a different way. Biden wants you to know that uh, we are we we are really really surging ahead. But everybody's caught on. You know who's caught on? This is kind of a damning indictment of the uh, of the Biden administration when Brian Stelter of CNN's reliable sources realizes there's a problem. You saw those pictures in the corner of the screen a few moments ago. The first military flight carrying an emergency supply of baby formula has just landed near Indianapolis, Indiana. (laughs) Baby formula flown in on a military plane. This is part of the Biden administration's Operation Fly formula as Americans are coping with a nationwide shortage. The pallets of baby formula were flown here from Germany. Uh, the staff, um, the master sergeant overseeing the shipment telling his staff, quote, we are literally saving babies. But this is both a failure as well as a success. The existence of this plane is a failure of the government and a failure of corporations as well, even though these pictures today are meant to symbolize a success by the Biden administration. I mean, when Brian Stelter gets it right, it's kind of notable given that he's not, uh, so much obsessed with Fox News and this had nothing to do with Fox News. And then, you know, you got Stephanie Cutler. She used to work for the Obama administration. She's now a political analyst for ABC News. President Biden, mm-hmm. okay, those approval ratings way down in the toilet. 39% in the latest AP NORC poll. Does his endorsement help or hurt. He's got a candidate in Oregon who he's endorsed, probably going to lose. Look, when you're the president of the United States, whatever is going great in the company, in the country, maybe you get credit. But whatever is going badly in the country, you absolutely get the blame. And inflation is high. People are just generally exhausted by crisis after crisis after crisis. Uh, And there's very little, you know, the president has put forward an agenda to deal with inflation. We saw how quickly he worked uh, uh, on the infant formula uh, crisis. He's handling Ukraine, pulling the world together uh, and rebuilding alliances against um, authoritarian governments like Putin. Um, You know, by any metric, with the exception of inflation, this country has moved forward under his uh, leadership. By any metric except inflation, this country has moved forward. Other than that, Mrs. Kennedy, did you enjoy the car ride in the convertible? Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? I mean, other than that inflation, everything's going gloriously in this country. My, how deaf can you be? That is Marie Antoinette style, let them eat cake. I, I mean, seriously, Mrs. Kennedy, did you get hit by a bird in the car? I mean, it, it seems like everything was beautiful that day. Come on. Really? Everything is fine other than inflation. Uh, inflation has wrecked everything. All of the major banks in the country say we're headed towards a recession now. The Federal Reserve is now doing the we we don't we we're we're trying to smooth the glide. When they say they're trying to smooth the glide, they know we're headed towards a recession. Deutsche Bank, um, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America. All of them are saying we're heading towards a recession. All the signs are there now. We're headed towards a recession. Now, what they're saying, what the Biden administration is saying is, hey, guys, we're not headed towards a recession this year. And all the banks agree the recession comes next year, which is kind of crap for Biden if we're honest and fair about it, because he starts his reelection period next year and a recession is coming. And I guess they hope they'll be able to pull us out of the recession. But with energy prices the way they are, they're not going to be able to pull us out of the recession. And now we got the baby formula shortage. We got a baby formula shortage in this country. American parents, you know, there was a guy, his daughter requires a special variety of formula. And he drove a thousand miles in a week to find the formula for his daughter. Parents will go to any lengths 
to protect their kids. Parents will do whatever they need to to protect their kids. And this man has driven a thousand miles in a week, going from grocery store to grocery store in his state to find the formula his daughter needs to survive. Think of the gas prices. And the left solution there is get a Tesla, get a battery powered car, trade in your car. You can't afford it. They're out to lunch on this issue. Now, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk about that aspect of this because it's something particularly if you're a Democrat, hate listening to the program, you need to understand now, uh, the, the window has probably closed. Democrats are banking on the fact that the end of Roe v. Wade coming in June, if it comes, is going to fundamentally change the dynamics of the election. I don't think it is. Because we've already had the leak of the Alito decision. And if we've already had the leak of the Alito decision and progressive activists have already gotten fired up about it and the polling dynamics have not changed in this country, I don't think the actual release of the decision, if anything, is going to be anticlimactic. They're going to realize, well, yep, it's done. It moves back to the states and it's not going to affect anyone. There were 890,000 abortions in the country last year. Most Americans don't know anyone who had or even wanted an abortion. It's not going to change things. But there are a hell of a lot of families in this country who are struggling for formula right now. And by the way, it's very tone deaf of some of the Democrats out there. Some Democratic activists, including the actress Bette Midler, have said, well, start breastfeeding your kids. It's better for them anyway. Do you know there are people like my wife who had to have a mastectomy when she was 25 and couldn't breastfeed her kids? How tone deaf do you have to be? It, it, your body, your choice, I choose to use formula, but now, no, you can't. You, you should do it the right way, women. How disparaging is that? Their messaging is all wrong on this. And to cha- do a photo op and not change the regulations, the FDA could tomorrow expedite a process, and they've refused. The FDA could open up the regulations and allow the import direct importation of European formula, the European formula market would kill for it. They would love to supply the United States, but American corporations, Abbott labs and the like, they don't want the competition. So they shut it down. And so there are kids right now in the country whose parents are struggling to provide them the food they need. We're going to have a lot of malnourished babies in this country. Y'all it's a real problem. I went to Publix yesterday. There was no baby formula in the store. Went to Kroger yesterday. There was no baby formula in the store. I was going, I had to go to Kroger and to Publix for a pork tenderloin. I couldn't get one at Publix, so I had to go to Kroger. And I was like, I might as well check the baby. There was none. None. At the local Walmart, it's restricted. The CVS was empty. The Walgreens was empty. I hadn't seen a can of baby formula, except at Walmart. I have seen cans of baby formula at Walmart uh, where I live. But you're restricted to only one can. You can't buy more than one. You know, when we had uh, when we had our babies, we would make a jug up, uh, and it would last a day. It goes bad. You can't make it and, and keep it in the fridge. It's not like milk or something where it lasts a long time. It has a very short shelf life the moment the water is mixed with it. But we could make, make a big jug for 24 hours so I could take overnight feedings. I mean, we had to do bottles anyway, and so we could go for 24 hours. But you would go through that stuff so quickly. I mean, we would have to buy multiple containers at a time. It's expensive. The price has gone up. It's hard to get now. You can't find it. And the best the Biden administration is willing to do is fly in a two-day supply of baby formula that is only a two-day supply for the entire nation. And they won't waive the regulation so that these companies can do it themselves. They're using your tax dollars to buy it and fly it in as a photo op. They won't change the regulations. They won't expedite the process. They won't consider alternatives. And now they're trying to get the pediatricians to say, well, just use cow's milk, which for decades they've said don't use. And by the way, don't use it unless you are in dire, dire straits. Don't. It can fundamentally mess up your your kid's uh, gut health at that age. And here we are. This is the United States of America, and the administration just seems stuck on Treating us like we are a third world nation. Whatever happened to America first? Well, we had that until we got Biden. 
There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing. And I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, more importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, you can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, you can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, they've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it. And I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC. Member FINRA. Pacific. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson. Um, listen, I have to talk about a difficult, awkward subject. And I need to apologize in advance. I'm very mindful. We try to be a family-friendly program here. And so I just need to, well, I, I got to talk about something because it's a big major story and you're not getting the actual accurate story and there's only one way for me to talk about it. But if you have children with you, I'm I'm going to do a countdown and you can step away for a minute before I get into the monkey box discussion just because we have to have a grown-up conversation here. Five, four, three, two. One. Now, none of you can send me hate mail for what I'm about to talk about. I, it's very awkward, but we do. This isn't raging homophobia. It's not an STD. It's just that the people who are getting monkeypox, the media doesn't want to talk about it because they don't want to appear homophobic, but they're all gay men who've engaged in sex somewhere in Europe and came back to the United States and began spreading it in this country with other people they were having sex with. I'm sorry. It's awkward. I don't want to have to tell you about it, but there's an entire news story out today about how the media is struggling to talk about this story without sounding like they're anti-gay. I'm I'm sorry. I I'm not trying to be vile, rude, crude, or awkward here. You've got to know the facts because there's this national media freakout now about it. Even the president of the United States is out saying it's something everybody's got to be freaked out about. Mr. President, quick question. What have your health advisors told you your level of concern should be about monkeypox and the cases that are in the United States and around the world? Well, they haven't told me the level of exposure yet, but it is something that everybody should be concerned about. We're working on it hard to figure out what we do and what uh, vaccine, if any, may be available for us. But- now, you know, listen, Charlie's texted me and said, just, just don't talk about it that way. Say it's sexually transmitted. But that's the point. It's not sexually transmitted. The people who are getting it have engaged in sexual activities together, gay men in Europe somewhere, but it's not sexually transmitted. They apparently, if all the press reports compiled in Europe and America, and unfortunately I've had to read a lot of them, are to be true. They were apparently a group of people at some gathering where they were engaged in, well, use your imagination, people. And some one or group of people there had monkeypox. And it takes like 13 to 16 days to present symptoms. And so they were contagious with no symptoms. And these people were all together in this group engaged in God knows what. And then went back to their home countries in Western Europe and the United States. 
And then there, they became contagious and began also being intimate in close contact with other people and spread it. It's not sexually transmitted. It just happens that the people who are spreading it are people who are having sexual relations with each other, getting very close to each other. It, it spread through physical contact and the exchange of saliva. So if you're not in a gathering where you're up close and personal doing things that your parents probably don't want to know about, you're probably not going to get monkeypox. It's not spreading in the wild. It's spreading from people going wild. Um, that's that's There's a difference between the two. It's awkward to talk about it. You see, because you don't want to be accused of homophobia. And so the media is not giving you the full picture. I suspect if you did contact tracing, what we would find is that the people in the UK and in New York and Boston and these other European countries were all together in like Ibiza or somewhere doing God knows what with each other. And then they went back to their home countries, but they were all in close contact together. And that's what people are missing here, except they're not missing it behind the scenes. They know it. They don't want to talk about it publicly because they're afraid of hurting people's feelings or sounding homophobic. It's the most bizarre thing. We cannot be honest about what has happened because we'll be attacked for homophobia. It has nothing to do with sexual relations. It has nothing to do with with with, with gay men having sex. It's just that's... In this case, the body contact that caused the spread. My gosh. I said you can't send me hate mail. I gave you time to get your kids away from the—, the I, Look, I'm sorry. I just—you need to know what's actually happening so you don't freak out about the monkeypox. Just don't get together with a bunch of other naked people, and you'll probably be okay. It's, it's not sexually transmitted— it's not an STD. It just happens to be that the people who all got it were in dis- – <laughs> let's just move on, please. I'm – just stop sending me hate mail. Just need you to know what's going on. It's my job to tell you what the real news is, and the media is too scared to tell you. Now, we have to talk about poor Joe. Poor Joe Biden. You know, it's 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 having an effect on Stacey Abrams down in Georgia. My gosh, Stacey Abrams has this unique habit of uh, – I'm jumping ahead here, but she has this unique habit of saying things that get her in trouble, and uh, <laughs> she did this weekend. She said Georgia's the worst place in America to live, and yet she wants to be the governor of the worst state in the nation to live. Yay, Stacey. Big, big Georgia fan there. Um, we got to talk about Biden, though. The the door has almost closed through which the Democrats must get to mitigate damage. The headwinds are bad, and, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on this because there's a lot of unique data out there, and it's just not good. The Democrats are pining their hopes on something completely out of their control. The reversal or overturning of Roe v. Wade. Let the, so one of the dem- famous Democratic pollsters is out with his survey of the landscape. Um, if you go to politico.com and check out their playbook, they've got the link to it. Uh, they've got the details of the memo on how things are stacking up for the Democrats. And it's it's bad. It's really, really bad. Uh, so bad, in fact, that it may actually be over for the Democrats. Doug Susnick has written his memo, his survey of the landscape. They leaked it or released it, I guess, to Politico with all of the details. And we need to review just how bad it is because there's some la la landness. And I got I to gotta tell you to begin with here. I've been through these cycles, y'all. I've run congressional campaigns. I've run state campaigns. I've run city campaigns, county campaigns. I was a lawyer for President Bush in 2004. I I have seen the currents in politics, the pendulum swings. You feel it. You feel it in the air that something is happening. There's no need for me to relive a, a brilliant, brilliant monologue I gave you guys a couple of weeks ago, but... The point is you recognize the ebbs and flows in politics. 
Virginia is a big key indicator. When Republicans win in Virginia, the next year tends to be devastation for the Democrats. When Democrats win in Virginia, the next year tends to be devastation for Republicans. It's just one of many warning signs. Look at special elections around the country. In Democratic seats, Republicans are picking them up. It's a warning sign. The same thing happened to Republicans in 2018. The Republicans, oh, no, it's what all special elections. They don't individually matter. No, you're right. A special election does not matter in and of itself. But when special election after special election after special election after special election you get rejected, it's a warning sign. When Republicans are picking up Democrat-held seats, long-time Democrat-held seats, down to the local level, it's a really bad sign for the Democrats. In 2009, Republicans began winning a series of special elections. They started winning local elections. They started winning special elections. They started winning city council elections. They started winning Virginia elections. And the Democrats, I was on TV at the time. I was on CNN. And they're like, well, these individual elections, there's no pattern you can connect to the federal race. Federal races tend to be different from these local elections. No. Individually, they're right. But as a pattern, it becomes a problem. As a pattern... It becomes a warning sign to the party in power that the winds have shifted against you. Doug Sosnick was the political director for Bill Clinton during his second term. He was the campaign strategist for John Kerry during his 2004 presidential run. He was chief of staff to Connecticut Senator Chris Dodd. He worked for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. He advised Mark Warner during his potential run for president in 2008. He now runs Brunswick Group. It's a polling and strategy firm. He represents the NBA, the Motion Picture Association of America, CNBC, the Rockefeller Foundation, the University of North Carolina. He's a Duke grad, and he represents the University of North Carolina. Traitor. He's advised over 50 senators and governors. The man knows politics, but he's also in the Democratic bubble, which, of course, is why he relies on Roe v. Wade, that Americans now realize that Roe v. Wade's days are probably at an end. Wouldn't it be funny if they pulled a slight and they affirmed the Mississippi law, but they left Roe v. Wade intact? Suddenly it sucks all the oxygen out of the room. The Democrats are really screwed. But I hope they get rid of Roe. But let me let me read you part of this. This is from Doug Sosnick. Last year, at the beginning of his term in office, President Biden enjoyed a five-month honeymoon with the American public when more than half the country approved of his performance as president. His levels of support during that period were much higher than Trump ever attained in his four years in office. President Biden initially received high marks for dealing with the health and economic impacts of COVID-19. Headed into the summer, there was a sense the administration was successfully managing the coronavirus and that the country was on the brink of a robust economic recovery. By most measures, competence had returned to government and life as the country once knew it was returning to normal. However, a series of events that started in July began to change the public's perception of the direction of the country, as well as the performance of the Biden administration and the democratically controlled Congress. Now, I got to tell you, I've pinned everything on Afghanistan, that that was the moment the American public shifted. Sosnick puts it earlier. The July 4th event on the South Lawn of the White House. President Biden held a picnic on the South Lawn of the White House for July 4th. That's when the seeds of this downward trend were planted. It created the false impression the COVID-19 battle had been won. Although the president warned the pandemic was not yet over, the message that broke through was the president's claim that America was closer than ever to declaring our independence from the deadly virus. The disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan the following month further undermined the public's confidence in the administration. 
The hasty and poorly planned exit led many to conclude the president had failed to deliver on his promise to restore America's leadership in the world and called into question his ability to get government on track again. The poor handling of the exit and the administration's unpersuasive explanations also marked a turning point in Biden's relationship with the press. Headed into the fall, Americans began to feel the effects of soaring inflation rates and supply chain bottlenecks. While the country had previously been experiencing a relatively manageable inflation rate at under 5.5%, by October it had climbed over 6% on its way to the current 8%. Consumer optimism, which had ticked up to 85.5% in June, plunged to 67.4% by November and now sits at 59.1%, its lowest in 11 years. During this time, intense public negotiations between Democratic liberals and moderates over the infrastructure package and the Build Back Better bill dominated national media coverage. In this long, protracted, and very public inter-party fight, progressives held the infrastructure package hostage for three months in hopes of securing moderate support for a $3 billion Build Back Better package, which would have funded various aspects of the progressive agenda. By November, without a deal in sight, an infrastructure bill was finally voted on, signed into law, and Build Back Better suffered an agonizing death. The public fight reinforced the impression Biden and Democrats were big spenders incapable of governing. It was also during this time that the national press began focusing on the off-year elections in Virginia and New Jersey, states Biden easily covered in 2020 easily carried. The coverage was framed as a referendum on Biden's presidency and the Republican success in both states reinforced the negative narrative that had been forming against Biden and the Democrats. The cumulative impact of these events transformed the increasing optimism of the country last summer to a profound sense of pessimism. For the last six months, over 70% of the public thinks the country's headed in the wrong direction. This sense of pessimism in the country has dragged Biden's job approval down to 39%, a significant drop. The president's low job approval has been driven by a lack of confidence in his handling of a variety of economic and social issues. Now, the more important part here. If past elections are an indicator, we're headed into the final stage of the election period where voters are beginning to lock in their views on the state of the country and their expectations for the future. The president's job approval during this stage is the best proxy to determine current levels of support for the party in power. The window is closing rapidly. In the last four midterm elections by June, the public had its mind made up on leadership in Washington and how they were going to vote in November. According to Gallup, Trump's 39% job approval rating in February of 2018 Obama's 41% approval in June of 2014 and 45% approval in June of 2010 and Bush's 38% approval in March of 2006 all matched their job approval on Election Day. As might be expected based on the incumbents' anemic numbers, the president's party suffered significant defeats and lost control of at least one branch of Congress in all four of those midterm elections. Notice He's hedging on the Senate there. He's not saying it in the memo, but he's hedging on the Senate because the Republicans do have some issues with candidate selections, and that's kind of their hope. In fact, he gets to it. This is why the stakes are so high as we enter the final period, pinning the court decision on Roe v. Wade as a way to alter the trajectory of the election. If they're not successful in reframing the terms of debate for the midterm, pending Roe v. Wade will look at the Democrat and Biden's failure last summer and early fall as reasons for the electoral defeat in November. Now, he doesn't get into it in this memo. But Doug Soskin knows this. And behind the scenes, he's advising Democrats get involved in Republican primaries and try to shape that field. Get involved and try to get Republicans to pick terrible candidates. You know, it's remarkable that Democrats have not gotten involved in the David Perdue race in Georgia. It's remarkable. All of the polling suggests Brian Kemp does better than Stacey Abrams, against Stacey Abrams, than David Perdue. And even Stacey Abrams' group looked at trying to get in there and said there was no help in David Perdue. They got out. But in other states, they're doing this. 
The Democrats are trying to find the Republican they think is most vulnerable in the general and elevate that person to be the strongest candidate in, in the primary. But doom is coming. It's really bad for the Democrats out there right now, y'all. The president's job approval rating in the real clear politics average is absolutely atrocious. And it keeps getting worse. Ron Klain, the White House chief apologist, chief of staff, was out yesterday pushing out a CBS News poll saying, I hate to disrupt everybody's narrative, but the polling actually shows Joe Biden's popularity rebounding. Do you know what his popularity was? 41%. With a 38% approval on the economy. It wasn't good. It's not good. It's bad. And it's not getting any better. It's not going to get any better. Neither, for that matter, is the economy right now. And you got to worry about your retirement. And you may want to reach out to my friends at Gold Co. and see if they can help you. Learn how to put gold and silver into your account and, you know, even it out, help it with the inflation, with stock market crashes. You don't have a lot of options, but Gold Co. might be able to help you put precious metals into your account to to give it some more stability. Call them 855-904-5933. They'll send you a free wealth protection kit to learn how to use gold and silver to protect and grow your money. Thousands of retirees are protecting their retirement savings, and many are getting $10,000 or more in free silver for doing it. So call my friends at Gold Co. Find out how you qualify for their special offer. They've been helping thousands of Americans help plan their retirement and bring some stability to their accounts. If you text my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777, I will send you Gold Co.'s phone number. You can reach out to them, talk to them, see if they're a good fit for you. You for them, text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, should you wish to be a part of the program, 877 877- Nine seven three seven four two five. You know there are uh, elections tomorrow in Alabama, Arkansas, and Georgia. It's like the SEC primary day and a runoff in Texas. I will be hanging out with Vice President Pence this evening at Cobb County Airport uh, with Brian Kemp. I'm the MC of the event. I got a. I was actually going to do the show at the house and then drive up, and then they needed me there early, so I had to scramble and get up there. So I'll be there. Hanging out with them. Kemp was doing a fly-around tour. It had to be canceled because it is storming all over Georgia. Bad. Uh, But they will have this event. Now, on my way up into the city today, you know, this is more and more common now where you're driving down the road and you're like, somebody smoking weed in their car happens all the time. I was sitting on my front porch the other night and the new neighbors through the woods which is kind of ironic. I mean, it was coming through the woods, which is ironic because the people who lived there before them actually are going to be in jail for 40 years for growing marijuana under their house and also brewing meth. Um, yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, it, literally, dude was apparently running uh, drugs up and down the eastern seaboard for one of the Colombian drug cartels and got busted. His wife was having the kids go through the neighborhood and steal guns out of people's unlocked cars and save, shaving the serial numbers. Well, they're gone, and the new people, they're very nice people, and ha, now I understand why they're so chill. But it's becoming a problem with truck drivers. I don't get this. Uh, but as more and more states have legalized recreational marijuana, more and more truck drivers are testing positive for the substance. And as a result, there have been 7,750 violations in the last year which is a 32.6% increase year over year. And as a result, they're being pulled from the workforce. If they test positive for marijuana or CBD while off duty in a state where those substances are legal, they run into DOT zero tolerance policy problems. Again, listen, Regardless of where where you stand on the issue of marijuana legalization, it's legal in a number of states. And it's not like – although I will tell you, I had to call 911 probably about six months ago. There was a driver in front of us of an 18-wheeler who was completely baked out of his mind. I mean, you could see the clouds coming out of the cab of his truck down the interstate. He couldn't stay in the lane at that point, uh, and they had to pull the dude over. I'm sure he went to jail, but – 
typically it's not like they're getting high in the in their truck while they're driving, unlike the cars around the Atlanta area and most urban areas in the country now. And if it's legal in a state, the DOT needs to figure this out. They're not high while they're driving, and they're pulling uh, thousands of truck drivers out of the interstate, off the interstates, causing a trucker shortage by aggressively enforcing laws about substances that are legal in states where they're using them. We're running into supply chain problems head on with this when none of these drivers are under the influence while driving. Something's got to give here at the federal level, particularly from a pro-pod administration like this one.